Welcome to Toot Sweet. I'm Pax Maley. This is my good friend Juan Mercado. Um, we get to, uh, we're, the, we're the lucky two that get to kick off uh, this little game of tag that uh, our good friend DDA has, uh, has, uh, has um, elected to start this uh, summer. So the idea is uh, somebody, you know, tag your it. So uh, essentially, uh, I guess I'm the lucky one that gets to start. I chose to, I wanted to talk to Juan. I haven't seen him in a while. Juan and uh, I've been friend, Juan and I've been friends for, what have we just figured, close to 20 years. I mean, not yeah. quite, but, but pretty, close. pretty close. DDA, the same. And uh, Juan's a busy guy, I'm a busy guy. We don't uh, see each other as much as we should, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to catch up. Uh, and what a great way to kind of, kind of uh, kick this off uh, uh, with DDA. Uh, and then at the end of the show, the idea is that Juan will then tag your it somebody else. So a, a friend, uh, a colleague, uh, somebody that wronged him. Uh, you know, this is a great opportunity to really, uh, you know, kind of roast somebody. And apparently Juan was a little worried about that. He is, uh, he's obviously on Team PAX today, uh, which is good. Uh, whether or not it's going to help him or not, I don't know. But, uh, but no, um, thank you for joining us, uh, if actually anybody is watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's when you. That's when everybody laughs. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so Juan, welcome. Thank you for uh, accepting my uh, my invitation to tonight's first round of tag. Um, so, uh, if for, I'm sure everybody knows this, but Juan Mercado uh, started Realm uh, Winery. Uh, probably, uh, what your first vintage was 2002. 2002, yeah. Uh, aside from that, Juan has just been an all-around great guy. Um, everybody in the valley had knew Juan right way before he started Realm, um, but uh, once uh, he did, he uh, leapt to uh, massive amounts of fame and <laughs> and all that good stuff. And uh, so. Uh, Speaking of that, like 20, 2014, I mean, a pretty good year for you guys, huh? Yeah, it, it ended up ended with a bang, I guess. Uh, really excited where 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 the things ended up, and uh, 2015 is kind of just continuing. So really excited to see where things things are going. So what are we talking about? What 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 was what was the best part of 2014, or what was the big bang at the end of 2014? You know, 2014 we were. Uh, releasing our 2012 so it's a great vintage yep. um, and we had put a lot of time and effort into the new packaging the website and all and so and that was all being uh, introduced for the first time in the fall of 2014 yep. so economy everything's doing better new packaging the new wines great response to the blends that we released in the fall yep uh, we had our best release we had ever had uh, and then obviously, you know, reviews start coming out, and so it's just kind of continued into the beginning of this year. So, what happened when the reviews came out? Um, a lot of texting, a lot of calls. What, uh, wait, 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 back up. Yeah. What, 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 ha what time? Uh, for those of us, the uninitiated, like, what happened with the reviews? Was there something that was really great or really bad? Or? <laughs> no, you know, we've always, <laughs> we've always had, we've always had really, you know, good reviews, and and but uh we got some parker a couple of 100s and that, that uh, right, right? You're, you're supposed to laugh at that point <laughs> no no so it just it just kind of uh it's just been a little overwhelming at times benoit and i were both together at uh, formula one race which was which we really we now you're just showing off no no <laughs> no we were it's become a tradition for us and we got this call and uh Initially, we just kind of got off the phone, and we were both kind of looked at each other, and we were like, no, that's not, the, that's not the case. But we couldn't ignore it, because then you start getting calls and texting and congrats, and so it was fun. But, you know, we both talk about it, and we say the best part is just seeing everyone around it get so excited, yeah. you know, and that's, that's the best part. You know you, you know, you guys, you know, have had some amazing scores, and it's the same. It just helps, you know, it's so hard to get any brand going when you first start. And you try to get that wheel spinning, and when you get that help, it just makes life a little bit easier in some ways. Sure, you know? sure. 
So, so I mean, you know, we're, we're lucky to have Benoit here in the, uh, in the uh, peanut gallery with us tonight. Was there a moment when you guys were, like, tasting the wines or the wines are bottled and you kind of look at each other you're like, wow, that's pretty darn good. Like, is, was, there, was, there, was there anything that, or is this totally out of left field? Was it a big surprise? You know, we knew that it was our best vintage to date because we had put a lot of money into the production of the wines. Uh, you know, with Benoit coming on board, uh, you know, and, and just the new, you know, the new business partners, we knew, okay, there's no excuses now. We can get everything from the website. Things that in the past, in the past, you just focused on the wines. Now you could kind of work on, on, on the whole package. And so I knew, I knew that the wines were better. We just from looking at the resources, the amount of time and, and money that we put in with the vineyards, the vineyard managers, uh, the, you know, all the growers, uh, and, and Mother Nature obviously cooperated. Right. So with all yep. of those, we knew that it was kind of our, you know, Benoit's job not to mess it up. I always say, I always, <laughs> if the wines are great, I take credit for it. If the wines are bad, I blame Benoit. No, but no, so that was, that was kind of, that was the idea. But we, you're not, you knew that, you know, our, I'm really happy with our 07s. You're not expecting to get that kind of review. That, that was out of left field. Um. It, it, it's just got to be. It's just got to be. It's just you know. There's been so many. Um, there's been so many. You I mean you've been through a lot. You started Realm. Um, it's been um, you know a little bit like you know Sisyphus. You're kind of have have been pushing this this stone up the hill. I mean, does it feel like you've? I mean, what what what's? I mean, do you feel like you know that like it's all been worth it, or did it never feel like it wasn't going to be worth it anyways? I mean, it's. I mean, you've you've had a lot of. It's been, it's, you've worked very hard for this, is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it, it's, you know, I've always said to this day, I can wake up and say I've got the best job in the world. Yeah. You know, and, and that's how I feel. I'm very blessed to be able to. Although I read on your website you didn't get paid in 10 years. It might not be the best job. It might be like <laughs> that, like that <laughs> third best job, maybe. Yeah, that, that's a whole other story. Okay. But, you know, with any, with any startup when you're starting, you know, when you're starting something from scratch, you, you have to sacrifice. And, I, and, I know and that. that and that's and that's a big that's a big part of it. And yeah. I've, you know, like I said, been very fortunate. There's a lot of people here, around here in the studio that have been a big part of it. That have been big supporters and that have stood by through you know the best of times and the worst of times, the best vintages and the worst vintages. So I've had a lot of help. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's I've never once had any regrets. And I I mean, I get to do this every day. Yeah. And how cool is that? You get to do it every day. We yep. both, yep. when I first met you, it, you really, that was, you were going to make wine. Somehow, some way, you were going to do it. Yep. And you just kind of figure it out, yep. you know? Yep. So. You know, you, uh, I was lucky to run into you this uh, past holiday. We were, um, we were at a, a party together, and you told me this great story. You were in this room with these musicians and these, all these chefs and, you know, this great group of people. And, you know, the press had just come out and you're walking around the room and the chef, you know, comes over and introduced himself to you. He'd read about the wines and, and uh, you know, there's all these people there. And, and, and he, I mean, when, when you, know, you know, you started out, you know, not as, you know, not in a wine family, you know, not, not, not like born into something, you know, you were, you worked and, and, and scrubbed every bin and, and, you know, you were, did you, did you ever imagine that you would have a famous chef telling Jimmy Page that you just won basically a Grammy in the world of wine? I mean, that is, I mean, that's pretty for, I mean, you know, that's, that's, I mean. No, I mean, I'm still starstruck when I see whether it's any famous chef. So when they actually know they don't know me, but yeah. when they know the label, then I know, you know, I think we've done something right. You right. Know? And that's, that's pretty, that's, that's a really, I mean, how satisfying is that? Yeah, right. You know, we're off, if you're in the wine, you're in the food. You right. Know? I hear that. And it's a big, big plus. So, um, so a lot of, you know, a lot of hurdles along the way, though. Yeah, there's been a, <laughs> it's been a. Tell me about October 2005. Nah, I kind of block it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a that was a yeah that was just not a good day. We had that was a day of the of the arson fire in Vallejo, and uh, yeah. it was uh, it was tough because that was also the biggest vintage at that point ever in California. So you're thinking, 
the yields are going to be huge, really expensive uh, fruit costs that year. But, yeah. you know, that's where, again, it's like you need whenever it almost becomes kind of when you're starting, especially in this business, you're relying a lot on a lot of people. It becomes a big family. And we had a lot of growers that stood by, you know, when they could have when we couldn't afford to pay them. But so yeah. basically what happened is your 2003 vintage, am I right on 2003? Yes. Was in bottle, in a warehouse, and some jerk lit the place on fire. Yeah. And so your wines that had not been released, I don't even think you had taken your personal wine out of there yet. No. I mean, these are, these, so it's, we're, we're talking like essentially the entire vintage is up in smoke. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the, like you said, expensive fruit costs, you know, all of this stuff. I mean, did you ever have a chance to really get to know the wines? I mean, these are like lost children. I mean, no, is... you, you know, and it's, I'm glad you bring that up because on Saturday at Premier, I was there uh, under the alias Tate Spaulding. And uh, <laughs> hopefully everyone got that right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caddyshack. Yeah. So and so I ended up. Uh, I ran into Tom Farella, one of our growers, and he just kind of out of the blue, he was one of the first, I think he happened to be there during bottling that he came by that I gave him a couple of cases of wine. Oh, nice. And so he actually said, just out of the blue, by the way, I've got a case of 03 Farella waiting for you. Oh, so you've got tons of this stuff. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> but we, we don't have a single bottle, so it's very rare that I, that, I, that, I get to, that I get to have it. And you do, you just kind of, you block it, you block that chapter. You just have to, at some point you have to. Do you like just, seeing those wines? I mean, they're, yeah, they're, no, I mean, they're, they're a big part of, they're a big part of, you know, our history, Mike Kirby's history. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, of course. Did but you I, have, did you have a favorite of the, of the wines? A favorite in 03, probably, you know, I was, that year we got to work with David Abreu. Yep. And so having that, those vineyards just were a lot of fun because it was a new relationship and yep. having to work, with, getting to work with him and Brad Grimes. Yeah, that was those were that, so that's where the Bard originated from. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So would probably, you say the Bard's your favorite? Probably in 03. When was the last time you had one? When was the last one I had one? Uh huh. <laughs> oh boy, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't even remember. Should we open a 2003 Bard? Sweet. <laughs> I, uh, I won't tell you how long it took I'm me to speechless. climb around in my wine cellar to find this today. Wait, what's yeah. the vintage? Oh, 03, oh, hard. Wow. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, we should open it, right? Do I have to share? No. <laughs> <laughs> Only yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> no. Can I open it? Yeah, yeah, of All course. Because right. I already <laughs> fucked up the foil. Yeah. All right. All yeah, right. no, I don't think that's... I think the last time I had an 03 was probably four years ago. All right. Well, we're going to drink one right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In front of millions of people. Oh, I broke the cord. <laughs> oh. 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 get up there and help us. <laughs> I gotta savor the ball. Must be corked. Yeah, let's. Hey, let's, let's... Uh, um, so, uh, so when you when you when you uh, when you get a hundred points, are people like uh, what? What's the craziest thing somebody did trying to get the wine? You know it. Kiss. Kiss. <laughs> okay, that is crazy. Touch. Okay. A touch, yeah. So it's not like any other. Uh, bin, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's like every other. No one's right, Benoit? Right? <laughs> For you. <laughs> no, it's. Feature out. <laughs> no, it's not. Nothing, nothing crazy. I mean, you just get. There's obviously a lot of people that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Big glass. Big boy glasses. Yeah. No, there's a lot of people that obviously start contacting you and. But yeah, no, nothing. I haven't nothing crazy. No one's camped out, and you know, or, or you know, you're not, like, you're not as big as Silver Oak yet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. That was awesome. Amazing. No, give me a little rinse, man. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> I need to call Mike right now. It's like, Mike, do you want to <laughs> get over here? Get over here. Mike, who? Herbie. Oh, the Herbster. Herbster. So, um, uh, before we kind of get on to that, I mean, I think it's, it's great talking about, you know, these different trials and stuff, but I mean, you know, naming a wine, it's a very difficult thing, right? Very difficult. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, uh, speaking of Jimmy Page, I think, uh, um, John Paul Jones said there are no good band names left. You know, do you kind of feel that way about wines? It's just really hard to like, it, 
A lot of them are, you don't realize how many are taken already. Exactly. By, by wines, by, people you know, like, you've people never People that of. just get out there and like, like lock names up and stuff that, yeah, that don't have to really make wine yeah. yet. Uh, do, you, uh, do you remember how the Realm uh, name came about? Oh, no, totally. Um, we sat around at DDA's house one night, there were about 10 of us, and after drinking and eating all night, we sat down and just kind of jotted down names that came, the first thing that came to mind. So we, we basically, everyone had to say whatever came to mind, and you can imagine as people drank more, some of the names got a little bit uh, nuttier. I remember it but, well. But, uh, and I know, I still have the notes somewhere that Punky, your sister, took. Is it Pam? Huh? It was Pam. No, Punky was writing down oh, all the names. Oh, the names. Okay. But okay. It's, it's Pax's wife, Pam, that came up with Realm. And so, yeah. And so, <laughs> and so uh, why don't? What do you have against Pam? Why do you hate Pam? <laughs> what do I hate Pam? Well, I, I think when we all sat down, the deal was that whoever named the winery was going to get a case of every a vintage. And uh, yes. I don't I never receive. I mean, I think I have, I have a lot of witnesses to this. Was, was, that, was, that me or the, was that me or the alcohol talking? Uh, <laughs> no. But, <laughs> no, but yeah, no. But no, I thought it was, it was an amazing gesture because uh, the first time I heard it, and I just thought realm of possibilities, I knew that it would be that name. And... Pam specifically said we wanted to use that name or kind of save it at some point to use it, but she just thought it was appropriate to bring it up, and here we are, you know. Right on. Yeah. No. It's, it, it, I love. You know what? I, I actually I really do, I do love that about the story. I mean, it was such a uh, such a great kind of moment for all of us, just kind of being around the table hanging out, having a good time, and literally just throwing names in the hat and then somebody reading them out. I mean, it, was, it really was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, that was, it was, uh, it was just a, it was our core group of friends and it'd be, uh, for everyone that was there, you know, with Teresa and Dan and yeah. Lynn Wilson and Maura and that yeah. whole crew, yeah. it was um, it's pretty cool, you yeah. know, to be able to name something that has kind of weathered the storm and has a still around, so. Was this the night that the paella pan went onto the brick and did he picked everything up and threw it back in the pan? Yeah, that, it was, that, that was a five. That was a five second roll. <laughs> okay. Okay. All wrong. Scarred, yeah. scarred for life by that, but uh, yeah. different time. Different winery. So we're on to uh, the modern chapter of Rome. Uh, kind of a, a, f a fresh look on the labels, uh, some uh, some fresh blood behind you to give you the support you need. Mm. Um, you know, you have the you know this little interim where Benoit will be with you before he moves on to you know, be <laughs> like uh, you know mini me Michelle Roland and uh, <laughs> Ali was the guy. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's it, it it has to be you know. I mean, like you said, the realm of possibilities. It has to be such an exciting time because of A, the momentum, B, the support. I mean, are you, are you just like so excited with like what's happening and like what's going, like, like tell, tell us about like, like what's next, like what, what's happening, like, what, like what, where, where are we heading here? I'm just trying to keep up at this point. Yeah. It's really hard That's to... To, uh, I think the next step for us, we know ultimately, and with our size, we're at a point that we can, you know, with what we pay for rent, we can actually afford to pay a mortgage. So we're we're looking for a we're looking for a home. Yeah. Uh, and I think from a brand standpoint, I think ultimately when people come to Napa, they kind of want to see a home. Yeah. And so, and from a production standpoint for Benoit, you know, it makes life a lot easier because it's your own kitchen. Yeah. And so there's a lot of benefits, not only from a production standpoint, but from a brand standpoint. So we're looking. The problem with the Napa Valley is it's so expensive that yeah. it becomes more of a real estate investment. And we're not, the wine still has to support the home. Yeah. You know, and that's a, so we're very, we're very limited, but in terms of choices, but we're looking and, you know, hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have something. Cool. So, because it's just going to continue to get more, you know, more expensive. Right. Yeah. But uh, we're excited about it, and um, 
Yeah, and that's just Where you started. Yeah, how cool to be able to design your own from scratch, your own place. I mean, I, I mean we've never had that opportunity. Yeah. And so uh, hopefully somebody other than Benoit is going to do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, but yeah, that's that's probably the next big thing. And then yeah. Uh, but it's yeah, there's a lot of great opportunities and and uh, we'll just, you know, we're just kind of keeping our finger on the pulse and see what's out there. Cool. Should uh, um, should we get Benny over here? We can talk to him. Yeah. He can talk to us yeah. about uh, oh. bring over uh, this, this, uh, this uh, close up of his eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. How are you, sweetheart? I'm good. I'm good. Get over here. So uh, you know, I, you know, there was uh, lots of emails back and forth about how we were gonna just like you know bring up all these horrible things, but uh, oh shit, <laughs> I'm, making, I'm making us all. Up. Um, but no, uh, like what, uh, like what, uh, what's exciting to you? Like, like, uh, well, I mean, it had to have been exciting joining on because it was like it was a train that was rolling forward. You know, you guys were living together, lovers. Hey. Um, <laughs> 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 no, I think that would be great. I mean, like it's joining the family, like you, DJ, uh, one, uh, live with one for seven years. Yeah. Um, Common what, law at this point. Yeah, this we were time. living together for what seven years? <laughs> oh. <laughs> three years. Three years. <laughs> and, uh, and and Mike decided to to um, to to, um, to uh, focus on his own like uh, on personal like project and. Uh, and I guess I wanted to help you to, um, to blend the wine so it came naturally that maybe I could help and Michel Roland was happened to be in town. So, yep. And I guess from that one get the idea to why not working together. Yeah. So yeah. it was very organic, natural. And, and what yeah. happened after is just say, hey, listen, you know, we enjoy it. It's there and then move forward. And yeah. it's the same kind of things you created, the three of yeah. you. Like. And uh, in, in 2013, a great vintage as well, as well, probably for you guys, I would imagine. Yeah, no, it's great. We tasted, uh, we blended it, so it's ninety-five percent finished. Yep. And uh, very excited with the wine and tasted some. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, we had a great thirteen and, and fourteen to come. So it's pretty. Uh, it's, I don't know what he says. It's, we're blessed to have like those vintage. And, yep. And the wine, I think, like, you know, please people. Yep. Like, you know, we please. So hey. And. Uh, have you ever had the O3? No. No? Yeah, one never opened anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it feels, how you don't get anything. You know? Yeah, I know. Um, you don't me a case. Me too. <laughs> like That's why I brought my wine. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try that? That's right. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. No, one of the reasons that we brought, um, you know, Benoit and I being roommates, he, you. you know, other than Mike and I, he had had the wines more than anyone because yeah. I always had them around the house. And so he always knew our wines and I got to taste his wines over the year, over the years. And, you know, when we, you know, when we were looking for a winemaker, it was, you know, I knew that there was a possibility, but I didn't know if I wanted to bring work and friendship together. No. And it wasn't until Michel Roland, uh, kind of through Benoit, volunteered to help us, just a blending exercise. And basically, at the very end of the blending exercise, we all kind of sat around and thought, this is actually a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, maybe we can make, let's make this work. And that's really how it all started. But it wasn't and planned. And sitting down with Michelle Roland, I mean, it, 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 you must be a little, you know, maybe partially starstruck, but, but partially, like, trying to pay attention to, like, what you're tasting. Like, is there, is there one thing that you, like, that you could put your finger on that you learned from your first time sitting down with Michel Roland? You know, he's, uh, the thing that I remember about him is he's very, from the very first time, very candid, and he's got this photographic memory. So when you ask him a question, he can, he responds in a way that you can, comp you, you can understand. You can sit there and, and he's very candid. Uh, he can taste your wine and you can tell him, is this every bit as good as this wine? And he'll tell you no, or you know what, not only is it better, but we can even make it even better. And, that's, and that for me was the, the, you know, we all got into wine. What brought us into wine was that 
not only wine itself, but learning about it. And you never, it's, I've, always, I've always described it as golf. You never master it. You can spend a lifetime trying to do it, but you never master it. But how fun is it? How fun is that challenge? And wine's the same way. And he makes, he's kind of like having a, a for better or for worse, a golf pro with you. Sure. That can help you. Or maybe a good caddy. Or, yeah, like a really good caddy. No, but that, that's true. And, 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 and no one's ever called Michelle yeah. on a good caddy. Yeah, I just needed to do but, oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. It, cool. it, it, and I'm oversimplifying it, cause it, but that's not, the, the point is he can, he makes our job a lot. He, he gets us to think about things and blends that that we don't that you know we don't we normally might not think about. You know, one of the first things he brought up, the one you know actually the big now that I think about it, the biggest thing that he brought up that day was, you know, he he specializes in blending, and the thing about a winemaker is they know what happened in the vineyard, they know what happened in the cellar, they know all of that. They know too much. And they know too much. Yeah. And he's always said, if you look for something in a wine, you're going to find, find it, it, whether it's there or not. And he comes in with a blank canvas, and he can go in and create a blend yeah. with lots that you might not think are good enough, but somehow he can he creates these blends, and it really keeps you on your toes. And yeah. that's and that for me is probably one of the most val probably the most valuable thing. And that's why a lot of times when we now talk about wine i tell benoit i don't want to know what happened i don't want to know what happened yeah. because i just want to come so in with a blank it. slate yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's true yeah um that is uh that's super fascinating uh, for me um you know blending is uh is uh, one of those things that is uh incredibly <laughs> difficult um uh, are we going to get to all of these questions that we have on yes yes <laughs> Start, I'm gonna start wondering about this. Uh -huh. Would it be like a harder or easier than uh, what the time you started with? That's all good for your so fast. I mean, because you guys started with the wonders and at the same time. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I would, it's, well, there's more money at stake. I mean, it was expensive back then. When we first started, we were paying about $10,000 for, and that was a break uh, for Tokelon. Yeah. You know, we we're probably spending our other vineyards for 7,500. Those are above Napa Valley averages today. So it was a lot of money back then. I guess it's always going to be difficult. I mean, it's never, you know, housing, you can, in hindsight, you can always look back, I should have kept that house, now it's worth so much. Um, it's all relative, but I think it would be, there's probably 300 more wineries than there were 10 years ago in Napa alone. So yeah. it's, it's definitely much more competitive. Uh, yeah. So, you know, but if I was, I've always said, if I were to try this three or four times, I'd probably succeed once. Yes. My, my, my feeling. What about you? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, first and foremost, it seems that, you know, everyone and their brother and their sister and their sister's brother has <laughs> a, I guess that would be the same person. Uh, has a winery and it's a lot um, but I guess the positive outcome out of that is you have passionate people yeah. creating something that they believe in and I think in 2000 we started PAX in 2000 uh, 2002 was your first vintage of realm I mean I think it was a different landscape back then I think it was pretty myopic I think there was just a couple of voices that kind of that kind of uh, led the charge on what was happening in the world of wine, and you needed to get their attention. I feel now that there's just so many more people and 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 opportunities and tastes and just things going on that I think that as long as you don't think that you're going to become, you know, financially you know set for the rest of your life if you really are only doing it as as a as um, a way to do something to follow something that you love um that i'd say it's, it's easier now i'd say it's probably harder now to maybe make a living like a real living off of it but i'd say it's probably easier now to get started to get something in the bottle and to get it on the market and to find an audience yeah. because that's the that's the thing is finding the audience i mean you nice. you have uh, 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 um, the fat man is, of course, every, like, uh, it's on everybody's lips. And I'm, I'm, I, I thought, say it, say it. Uh, there will be subtitles, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
you, you've just recently, uh, I, it's within the last two years. Yeah, or, yeah. Oh, okay, a couple yeah. years. We've launched a, a, a brand as well yeah. here in Napa Valley. So uh, you probably are the best person to answer that question. Um, like, how do you feel about that? Do you do you feel that uh, that that it that it is because of the cost and, and all of that? I mean, you know, you, you know, you can buy a ton of grapes and make. 50 cases of wine and, and 50 cases of wine. 40 in this case. No. <laughs> the 20% Sanier, of course. I forgot about small that. Bin, uh, the berries are small. Oh, I, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of yeah, course. Yeah. I forgot, I, I forgot about the small berries. I tight and concentrated. I forgot about the small berries. Sorry. Small berries. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. We've got, we we've got really, you guys. in Sonoma, we've got really big berries. Yeah. yeah. Unlike you Napa guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, back to, uh, back to, um, what, I mean, what do you, Damn. What, <laughs> but, but, but really like, uh, are, are we, uh, are we close? Because I'd really like to hear what you have to say about that. Ben. No, go ahead, go ahead. no, I think I started like, uh, I went and looked for fruit for a client and was yep. Bernard Magre and, um, get the opportunity to find, um, the vineyard that I really, really like yep. and started with, uh, really thinking about it. The reality right nowadays, I have to think about it, so I take a lot of advice from one to uh, to make that brand viable and, and and continue to be able to afford the grapes. The one making be able to offer what I want to offer to to um, to the consumers out there, but it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's tough. Yeah. And for one, I think that when I see you being that successful, yeah, I think it's pretty rare. Well, lightning. It, I mean, it, I mean, beautiful. it is literally lightning striking. I mean, and there's it doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a common thing. I mean, you can. Yeah, I mean, for one of you, you're gonna have like twenty maybe that yeah. don't make it. Of course, you know, but I think it's. Uh, yeah. I don't know. If it's, yeah. Maybe it's the way it's supposed yeah. to be. Well, I mean, you know, sorry. No, yeah. no, I was just gonna say Jeff Smith is is helped me out quite. He's one of the guys that I always bounce ideas from. Right. And he put it really well. I we were there. Benoit and I were both with him, and he said, you know, when you start one of the, you can do this four or five times, and you need the skill set. You need the team. You need the. You need everything has to click, but you also need some magic. Yeah. And without any magic, it doesn't matter. You can repeat the same formula, and it doesn't work in other brands. But you, your brand needs a little bit of magic, and that's out of your control in a way. It is. It you is. Need, you have to have a little bit of luck and be at the right place at the right time, right people tasting the wines, and that's out of your, out of your control. So. Um... So we've come to, unfortunately, kind of the end of our broadcast, not the end of our night of drinking together, fortunately oh. enough for us. It's okay, but it's okay <laughs> you guys. I know, it's riveting. We come back for part two. But, um, but uh, you know, if, uh, you know if, 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 if Juan is the, is, has some magic, who are you tagging? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you yeah. tagging? Who, Show your magic who's, who, who's the magic we're passing the black on to? Yeah. <laughs> no, the, I think I'm looking forward to uh, interviewing Eric Jensen from Booker the Badger. Oh, oh no! Oh yeah, it's yeah. gonna be dirty. It's gonna, gonna be, be dirty. Time. You'll never get a word in edgewise. <laughs> that's why. That, that's exactly why I chose it. It's gonna be easy. It's gonna be easy. I will say that initially, when you posted this was gonna be a roast, I was really worried about it. Oh no! So that that's the hat, that's the shirt. <laughs> but I, but I figured if it did go that route and it got ugly, I was going to get ugly, and I was going to do this. Oh no! Don't do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Team Larkin. What about a hat? I don't know. I didn't yeah, no Larkin hat. hat. She just yeah, had yeah. quilted oh, vest. <laughs> but I figured. <laughs> It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I, 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 should I say closing remarks or should we just keep going? Questions? Keep going. If no one's watching, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the crowd is drunk. The crowd is drunk already. Talk like no one's watching. Should we dance like no one's watching? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what would we say if no one was listening? Well, uh, I have a question. So, um, as a winner, how do you look or find a good winemaker? You sleep with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Glad you said that. Yeah. No, I, I think uh, you have to have someone that uh, your palate, you don't have to like the same wines, but you have to have palates that you can, that uh, you have to have similar palates in terms of tasting tannins, tasting fruit, tasting you yeah. know, residual sugars, 
Because as long as they're calibrated, you might drink different wines, but if you, can, if, you, if you tell your winemaker this is really sweet and they don't sense it, that's not a good thing. You have to have someone that will, that gets what you're looking at. And that's, I think, where Benoit, and with Mike, where we had very similar palates. Now, Benoit and I probably drink similar wines. Mike was a big Burgundy guy, but he had, we had very similar palates in that we could, you know, find the same things in wine. And I think that was very, that, that's, that's very important. I've always said you gotta have a chef in your restaurant that can create the type of food that you want. And, and, and that's, that's very key. If you're, not, if you're telling your chef you're, that food's really salty and they're not getting it or vice versa, that's, that's a big problem. So, but, but with Benoit, we knew we had very similar palates. Um, and we, you know, if you have his wine, Fremont, you have our, our wines, are, they're, they're, not only there's a vineyard difference, but even sometimes, you know, from a, from a weight standpoint, you'll notice some differences, and that's because with, with, with us, he's always been very respectful of keeping what, you know, we always say like the realm house style, and then with his, he can do, he can do whatever he wants, and uh, there obviously there are some great similarities, uh, but there are also some differences, you know, and that's where, and it's been, it's been, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, it's fun to be able to taste wines from like another, like Las Piedras, and, uh, and it's just, even though they're only 500 yards from Dr. Crane, you taste them, they're both Cabernet and they're about 500 yards apart, very similar soils, but completely different. So. Any question? No? Yep. Let's, right. party. Let's party. <laughs> Let's party. Let's drink. Let's eat. Let's drink. Let's drink. Let's drink. Thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> There's no good What way. does he mean? <laughs> what does he mean? That's my only question. That's the only thing I want to know. <laughs> Woo! Uh, 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 oh, exactly. <laughs> and then we can go to the
Amen. Amen.